Great. I'm going to call the meeting of the planning board for the city of Peabody from May 20th. I'm going to call it to order. In pursuance of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on a number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the planning board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No one in-person audience, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so on matters not requiring a public hearing, we will post the city's, on the city's website an audio and video recording transcribed in other comprehensive recordings as soon as possible after the meeting. Now folks can contact us by, via Zoom and um, if they're hearing my words, they already have the links. Additionally, uh, this will be telecast on local access cable and I do believe it will be on YouTube in the future. And with that, I will go to the first order of business, which is the approval of the minutes of the meeting of April 15th and May 6th. There's a typo on the agenda here. We had only the minutes for April 15th. Is that right, Drew? Uh, there should have been both in there. They're, they're both there. Yeah, they're I didn't both. see the other set. I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for the regular meeting of April 15th and May 6th, 2021. I have an amendment. Amendment or a second? An amendment. Well, second, I, second first and then amendment if I may. Please, go ahead. Drew, could you put the date on the top of the April 15th ones? It's missing the 15. Okay, yeah. And I thought the Blyther vote on the tree was actually 6-2, not 7-1, but Tom's not here, so we can't ask him. It's not a big deal, obviously, either way, but yeah. That's all. Yeah, I can amend that. I have the video of it, so. So we do have a second with the uh, yeah, I second second amendment. And do we have a show of hands for approval? Aye. Let the record show that everybody's raised their hand. Okay. <laughs> Next order on the agenda is uh, land court. We have nothing. Okay. Site building permit plan review, 68 Prospect Street. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, the applicants, uh, I believe they are together. They are here. I'm gonna unmute them right now. Um, can you hear us? We can. Uh, so Joe, I have your uh, plans that you sent to me. I can have it. I can have it that, uh, sorry, I, just, I muted you by accident. You can unmute yourself. Uh, I can allow you to, uh, just kidding. I will share my screen, I guess. And if you want me to switch through slides, I can just do that. It's not allowing me to. Can, can you just uh, share the screen? I have it open. I have the PDF open. Uh, you know what? I'm going to promote you to panelist, and then I'll allow you to be able to share the screen so you can run the the slide show yourself there. <clears throat> so you, you should be able to share your screen now if you want to share your presentation. You muted yourself. <clears throat> so here we are. Are we good now? No, you you so you should be able to share your screen to show the presentation. <clears throat> can you hear us? We yeah. can yeah. Okay, excellent. And you can see our screen. We no. can no. Nah. 
Hmm. Well, we can. You want? You guys want to come up here? <laughs> Get plenty of room. So, so uh, Drew, if it's if it's easier um, for you to uh, kind of go slide by slide, we're happy to do that. That's fine. I will. Uh, I will share my screen. And gentlemen, yeah, okay. just for the record, who who do we have? Uh, uh, my name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney uh, here in Peabody, Mass. And with me this evening are Joseph Bettencourt, Kevin Hoyle, the uh, uh, owner of the, well, the proposed purchaser of the property, and uh, Chris Mello from uh, Eastern Land Survey. Those are the four that are at this end this evening. Thank you. Now, do we need the floor? Oh, we, we have, gentlemen. I think he'll tell us more. Mm -hmm. You want me to, but do you want me to go to a slide? Okay, so we're ready to kick it off. Yeah. Yep. All right. Do you want to just go ahead? Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Bettencourt, architect. Um, we've had a couple of really good meetings. Uh, so far, uh, some of what you're going to see tonight uh, will incorporate a couple of those issues that we've uh, we've talked about with the first two meetings. Um, uh, could you go to the next slide, please? So just quickly, uh, general project overview, uh, our total site area is 2.41 acres, about 106,000 square feet. Uh, once cleared, we have an available FAR of one uh, for development. Our proposed development uh, was showing roughly 81,000 gross square feet, which is an FAR of uh, about 0.77. Um, the slide says 30 to 32 townhouse style units, but we're actually gonna be doing 32. Uh, these are all two bedroom units and they're all owned. Uh, we are showing uh, 60 spaces currently, but we're gonna go to 64, which will be required uh, for 32 units. Um, we're going to be showing, we are showing 20 visitor spaces, uh, two of those being ADA compliant, um, and we will have six affordable units in the development. From a building construction uh, point of view, uh, we're going to be using the 2015 IBC series with all the mass amendments. Uh, we're all wood frames, so type five construction type, uh, fully sprinklered and um, you know, double wall, everything's fire rated, so all up to code. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide is really just looking at kind of the broader opportunities for not only 68 Prospect Street, but you know, to see if we can find ways of creating value for, um, for everyone sort of in and around the area. Uh, but we all know that this is a great site from a vehicular standpoint. So we have access to Route 1, 95, 114, 128. So it's very good uh, from that standpoint. Um, also um, easily walkable to the uh, walking and biking trails uh, on um, Lowell Street and you know, behind the mall. So that's a great amenity. Brooksby Farm, of course, is another amenity. Um, there have been some discussions about how we might start to uh, get across uh, Prospect Street. And Chris and I were just talking about, uh, there's a crosswalk that's being proposed uh, that will link from our side of Prox sorry, Prospect Street to the other side. And we're gonna coordinate to figure out where that goes. The idea would really be to tie into that retail destination at the North Shore Mall. So if you go to the next one, please. So <clears throat> this slide just um, zooms in a little bit more on the immediate site. Um, as we can uh, see, the, uh, the site is actually very well buffered on all four sides. Um, there are a couple of edges that we've been uh, really talking a little bit more about. Prospect Street, of course, um, I wish I could point, but basically we are, um, we're gonna be reworking the sidewalk uh, along Prospect Street from the corner of our property cemetery. from the cemetery to the southern portion of our property. That's what we're proposing currently. Um, as we know, there's also an existing mound that's uh, directly adjacent to the entry. All of that is going to get removed, and you'll see in the slide uh, how uh, really overgrown it is, and we just want to make that as safe as possible. 
Uh, also, the northern edge, um, which is at the top of the screen, you see the, the blue dashed line uh, and a red dashed line, that represents two existing fences. And as you'll see, uh, our thought is that uh, the wooden fence that's shown in red, uh, we're actually looking to uh, remove and basically move the privacy line to where the chain link is. And we'll have to figure out a way to screen that and make it uh, so that it's um, you know nicer than just a chain link. But uh, the idea is to really uh, take that privacy line and move it further north. This slide also indicates um, some of the elevations kind of running uh, south to north along the site. So we start at elevation 100 at the bottom of the screen and we descend down to the plateau as we call it, uh, which is roughly elevation 93 uh, to 90. That's sort of the middle zone and then it descends down to elevation uh, 80, as you'll see in this section as well. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this is just uh, context images of the, the three edges that I was just talking about. So just quickly, quickly to the left uh, is the southern edge um, that's closest to the Essex Green edge. So we can see that's really well buffered. And here we also see the elevation uh, 100 and how it starts to descend to that plateau. The middle image is a view of that mound that's currently next to the uh, entry. Again, that's all gonna get removed uh, to uh, be made much safer. Uh, and then to the right is the wooden fence that we were just talking about and uh, looking to move that uh, as well. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, kind of a, a first aerial view of the whole uh, development. And what's important about this slide is really the phase one. Um, so uh, our thought is we're gonna do 12 units as part of phase one. Uh, all of the work along Prospect Street will be done um, as well as the uh, first part of that central parking and the central commons uh, as well. And then phase two will follow with the uh, rest of the units as shown. Next slide, please. So this slide shows a general section uh, across the site. So uh, following that red line, sort of from left to right, that's elevation 100. Uh, and then you can see how it descends uh, to that central plateau to elevation 93, 90. And then as we go further to the right, uh, you see how the site will then slope down to elevation 80. Um, and that light dashed uh, blue line represents the location of the existing chain link fence. So again, just a general view sort of through the site. Uh, and just a note, um, I met with uh, Tom uh, McMullen, our landscape architect regarding that central, well, all of the landscaping, but specifically that central island um, it's shown as you know, being very lush, which is what we want to do. Um, but um, Chris has put some infiltration tanks in there, so we have to just coordinate that. And it was an issue that was raised at uh, one of our last meetings. So we are working on it and we are addressing it. Uh, next one, please. So uh, you know, we've all been up uh, Prospect Street, but this is really just for a matter of record. So we can see all the trees that are sort of outboard of that stone wall. Mm -hmm. Those are all getting removed. Uh, the sidewalk we know is in rough shape, so that's all getting taken out as well. Uh, next slide, please. And this is really just a preliminary uh, illustrative to kind of show our design intent. So the idea of uh, you know making this entry as safe as possible. Uh, we do want to make it beautiful, of course, but we want to make it uh, safe uh, first and foremost. So again, removing the um, all that underbrush and all those trees and you know, strategically uh, landscaping this front so that we get visibility in and out, I think is what we're trying to do. Next slide, please. So this slide um, also, it's, so it's directly across from the entry. Uh, and what's important about this slide is to show the proximity of the, um, the curb cut uh, that's across from our new curb cut uh, as shown here. Uh, and the idea that, um, you know, we've got traffic coming uh, from left to right on the screen on Prospect Street. We've got people coming off of this uh, curb cut and then our new curb cut being adjacent to it. Um, 
or closer to it actually makes it much safer. So um, it's easy for pedestrians, for cars and um, people getting in and out. So that's really the, the idea of this slide. Next one, please. So this slide, um, it's a little technical, but I just wanted to illustrate if we follow the red line um, from left to right. So that's the grading coming down from elevation 80 down to this natural swale that runs kind of north to, uh, along west. the north. Well, it actually runs uh, east-west, yes, correct, uh, along the northern edge. And so uh, we see the two dashed lines representing the two fences. So the existing wooden fence, which is about 10 feet off of the property line, that's the one that we want to remove. And we want to uh, create uh, or recreate the privacy line on the um, chain link fence line. So we'll have to figure out a way to take that chain link fence and really make it feel uh, very private. Uh, and of course, we'll clean up all that uh, underbrush and uh, make it um, kind of clean and accessible as well. Next slide, please. So then just uh, quickly zooming in on the uh, south units, these are the smaller units. Um, so you can see again, if we follow that red line, how the grading works. Uh, so elevation 100 is on the back side of these units. And then we're descending down to the central plateau to get to elevation 90. Um, so imagine if you come in through the front door, uh, you would then take a set of stairs uh, up to the main living floor, which was living room, uh, kitchen, dining, open uh, concept uh, with a patio uh, off the back. There is a bonus room behind the garage, and then we'll uh, we'll just carve into the back and get some light and make sure that uh, we have access from that egress, I should say. And then on the second floor, we've got the bedrooms uh, similar to the other side. Next slide, please. So these are the north units. And again, if we follow that red line, uh, the grading, so you come in, in this case, you're actually coming into the living room, uh, kitchen and uh, open dining. And then you would take a staircase down and then exit out the back. Um, yeah, it's a walkout. And again, you can see, I think you can get a hint of that chain link fence along the back. Next slide, please. Uh, just a general view of kind of the central commons. Uh, again, our, our goal is to make this development feel as leafy as possible. Uh, you know, we love the character of uh, Emory Street. And we want to bring some of that uh, kind of up the hill and kind of keep a low, quiet scale uh, as part of the development. So we are we will be working very closely with Tom to make sure that we can try to get some of this look and feel onto his actual plan. Next slide, please. Are we stuck, Drew? Oh, yeah. So uh, again, this is really just another um, uh, view showing the experience uh, along the north side of the development. And really the, uh, the spirit of the slide is to talk about the scale of the, the architecture and make sure that, it, again, it's quiet, it's a little bit more understated and really feels like it, it can sort of sit between uh, Essex Green, which is a little bit taller, and Emory Street, which is a little bit smaller, and we think that this is going to fit nicely uh, in between those two scales. Uh, next slide, please. And then just a view of the, the central commons. This is a progress view, but uh, we'll have the mailboxes, of course, and then uh, try to get some seating, maybe uh, some nice yeah, landscaping uh, to, to make it into a nice amenity for, uh, for the residents. Uh, last slide, please. Yeah, so that's really kind of a quick overview of the architecture uh, portion. Uh, again, I, our goal is to, um, you know, to keep the, the scale down, uh, to keep the architecture kind of quiet and a little bit more uh, understated and sophisticated. Um, you know, there was a question about light levels and lighting plan, which we will be working on. But again, you know, we want that to be uh, kind of rich lighting and, uh, you know, just so it feels like a really scaled project. Uh, any questions at this point? Dr. Otto? Dr. Otto. 
You're muted. Sorry, I'm muted. Yeah. Um, I'm having a little trouble understanding the section because um, the north bank of units looks like it has a garage on the um, ground floor. Um, but what's shown in the section is the living room. So how does that exactly work? Yeah, it's it's next to it. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't provide a plan. Oh, I see. Side to side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I should have I should have mentioned, uh, but the north units are actually a little bit wider. So as you come in, you take a staircase up and a staircase down. But the uh, the living room and kitchen uh, and dining is behind the garage. Oh, I see. Thank you. Roy. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, a few questions through the chair to the to the architect. If feel free. Um, so the plans show 30 units. You you said 32. Which which two buildings each get an extra unit? Uh, Chris Mello, he's still land survey. Uh, the uh, building that is parallel. Give me a building number, Chris. I got, I got, I got the plans right here. All right, I gotta open them up. What do we got, Kevin? Open the plan up. Okay, so the uh, south and west. The south side, coming in on the left. So coming in on the left side of the okay. building. Okay. <clears throat> Still don't have building. I'm working at. Oh, last page one. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Building number is still not on it. Units fourteen through eighteen. Which I'm not sure what the building number is. They're the west units. That will get a an extra unit in the back. Do we know who we are? What the small west? The west that's building three. Building three. Thank you, Jack. So that building, instead of having five, gets eight. I'm no, sorry, gets, seven. Gets one more. One more. I'll get one more. And we're going to alter the uh, location slightly. And yeah, Jack, what's the building up right here? Jack, what's this seven, building? One and two. Uh, so, building two will also get an extra unit. And those will be accomplished uh, by moving the cubes around slightly. Okay. Uh, and fitting them in. We so want to get two, two more. more. Becomes an eight unit. Building three becomes a six unit. That's correct. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I heard the architect mention. Uh, I don't know if he said eight affordable or did he say six affordable? Six, 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 six affordable. Isn't this 20% because of the overlay? Yes. It is. Yes. So do you round down? We do. No. Yes. Okay. Yes, no, we, yeah. we, we round yeah. down from the half. So yes, from the half. Okay. So, so I believe we would be at 6.4 units. Correct. 6.5, which okay. rounds down. Thank at you. 32. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've run this by uh, community development uh, through current and we need six. Very good, thanks. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just add uh, for a point of clarif clarification for the plan, and I'm sure Attorney Kelty will mention this as well, but just to, just to explain to everybody, they, uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. Bancor, Mr. Kelty, Mr. Mello, uh, they have come before plan, uh, construction review and they came before, uh, Will Pollitz and myself in a uh, secondary meeting. Uh, they are fully aware that they'll need third party review for uh, different aspects of this project. And there's still things that I know engineering is looking for. Uh, so we welcome them here tonight so that they could present this project to the planning board. As you can see, the plans clearly still need to be finalized, but we wanted that planning board to have the ability to comment on now so that your comments can be added in as the plans are brought to finality. So I would definitely use this opportunity now to comment uh, on items that you would like to see or uh, things of clarification. Thank you, Drew. I'm actually gonna bring up the peer review. So <clears throat> it appears that's on the way anyway. Uh, we will uh, actually be working with Horsley, Witten, uh, Ty and Bond and Weston and Sampson, which were, uh, the three companies that were assigned uh, to us uh, with 54 prospect uh, so there'll be some uh, cohesiveness and um, 
uniformity. And then we've also engaged, and the counting is going on as we speak, uh, we engage Bayside uh, Engineering, and I don't think we're going to uh, get a peer review. Uh, Will had thought that the World Tech peer review of Bayside's work uh, down the street would probably uh, suffice in terms of uh, with some additional counts. So we expect, and then uh, we also, our decks are going to uh, create the need for a variance, but the uh, building commissioner had suggested we go through these steps uh, so that we could gain uh, comments and, and uh, uh, critique uh, from the various boards, and then we'll apply for uh, the next round uh, at CONCA, at uh, ZBA. Thank you. Dr. Rado, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we gonna go through drainage and um, infiltration and lighting and all these technical things now? Or are we gonna save that for a later point? Uh, your prerogative, if uh, you'd like to do that now, we can, that's all going to be uh, peer reviewed, but if there, if you'd like uh, sort of a highlight of what happens with those, we're happy to do that this evening. I had one particular concern, and that is that the driveway location doesn't match up with the opposite driveway. And I'm wondering what opportunities you do have to, to get a better alignment there. Mm -hmm. We're opening our plans. I will also <laughs> add that the presentation that I was just showing also has the, the site plans yeah. on it, but it sounds like things are changing unless if Chris, you want me not to share the site plan that you provided as well. Actually, if you, if you do that, I'm opening it up and I'd, I'd be happy to go through that. So we're sitting here uh, looking at uh, sheet one, just the title sheet, if you could scroll through. Her sheet two is the existing conditions. Uh, sheet three is the existing conditions in front of uh, the Avalon property up to the intersection of Prospect and Cross. <coughs> that plan is provided so we can uh, look at the traffic, look at the uh, sidewalk and the access uh, as we may uh, improve it. Sheet three being the layout, uh, going further. Four. And uh, uh, Dr. Otto, as you can see there, uh, we brought either one of those, either sheet three or four, uh, I've altered the proposed entrance to the facility directly opposite, uh, we'll call it the, uh, the hotel slash restaurant, restaurant uh, mm -hmm. rear entrance from uh, Prospect Street. So we have uh, aligned that uh, to, uh, to eliminate some traffic conflicts. So I'm not sure what you were looking at, but I'm happy to talk to you about that. So what we're looking at is not what you are currently proposing, is that correct? No, we are We're looking at that right there. That's the proposed driveway and that's directly opposite the, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's as close as I can get it because they're not quite, uh, ours is a little bigger, but that's the rear driveway from the hotel, uh, Friedman Financial and Daniela's. Yeah, I understand. Well, I'm, I think what I'm looking for is a better match on the center points. I mean, I can see that the the um, horizontal lines on, on the curb areas align, but the center yeah. lines of them do not. Yeah, I might be four or five feet off, but that uh, we certainly can look at that and have our traffic consultant comment on it. But uh, that was my, my pick as to where I thought it worked best uh, with the radius as I was trying to uh, achieve for the vehicles coming in and out of the uh, our, our facility uh, and uh, the fire department had provided uh, some minimum radiuses which I uh, checked and applied to what we had and our radiuses exceed uh, their uh, their needs to get their vehicle in. Good. Thank you. Thank you. If I may from the chair, uh, Mr. Mello, is, is Prospect Street two ways at that point? Ah, uh, there's always the question. It's, huh? not. it's not. 
So, so uh, Joe, Joe's going to explain exactly what happened. Oh, because I, I've been known to go with the wrong way. Right hand side. Yeah. Go, ahead, Joe, way go for it. No, it's okay. So, uh, coming out of Emory Street, mm -hmm. you can make a left coming out of Emory. Otherwise, it's a one way from there south or up the hill. Is there signage to that? Uh, because I have yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Okay. If you exit the uh, driveway across from our proposed driveway, if you're ex exiting there from the restaurant, for instance, it, there's a left only uh, sign directly right there. Where... Would there be any interest in, in making two way from your property down to 114? Mm. If you would like, you can certainly take a crack at it. But well, I was curious as to what your traffic people might have to offer on that. Uh, that I'm sure that they'll be looking at that. But uh, the city and its wisdom has put something in place that uh, actually works pretty well. But uh, we would ask Ken Cram from Bayside to look at that, and I'm sure he'll opine. Uh, still with you, Chris, can you go over your, the current stormwater system? Sure. If we can go to, uh, let's try it. Drew, if you'd like to uh, shift a couple more pages, let's see, try one, see what happens. Uh, that, that's a good one. Yeah, five. Uh, so what we have is uh, our bank of uh, units surrounding the uh, perimeter of the property with a driveway that comes in and uh, circulates uh, on both sides with parking. The current sewer for the uh, MRI building comes in uh, from Prospect Street, has its own manhole, it's a, it's a line, and then it services that building. We're going to utilize that same position, bring in a sanitary sewer from Prospect Street going towards the west. It will then come up uh, into our uh, driveway facility and serve all the individual units with their own line. We'll bring in a water line off the 10 inch line in Prospect Street. We'll bring an eight inch line in. We will service all the individual units uh, for uh, water. We will service the buildings for fire suppression and we will have a hydrant at the westerly end of the uh, island facility uh, to service uh, general fire suppression. The stormwater management uh, will be an infiltration system largely placed in the center of the buildings uh, that shows up in detail in some of the other sheets, but it's a large infiltration system uh, that will take the water in. This is another system uh, on the southerly side of building three uh, that shows up as passive recreation and snow storage in some of the plants. And currently the water, uh, stormwater runs totally overland. There isn't a catch basin on this property. It sheet drains into a swale that goes into the, the stormwater management facility to the west of our property on the Avalon property. That was built to uh, compensate for the Avalon development, which originally had our drainage on it because this entire site was owned by Beverly Hospital, Northeast Health. They sold this piece off to the MRI building people and their stormwater, when they sold that off, was all on the other 11 or 12 acres that became Avalon. When Avalon was permitted, they eliminated that stormwater management system and built this new one on the westerly side of this plan, the left, behind their building. Uh, we will not be adding any uh, surface stormwater to that, and we will have a, an overflow, but all of our water will be infiltrated. There'll be no increase uh, in runoff or rate, which is a little exceptional. That seems to be the, uh, the new rules that we're trying to follow so that in all the storm events, we will infiltrate our water. Nothing will leave the site. If, if I may, even from the northern edge of your, your property, it's gonna run back to the center of the property? That's correct. You'll see that there's an existing swale there correct. that will be maintained. So that water will continue. To continue to go to the west? It'll continue to go to the west. And the, the fact that that is on the property of another, that stormwater uh, facility, it's not, it's not an it's issue. Like, we, we have the right 
to do that. We've gone through the Conservation Commission with the determination of applicability that we do not have a resource area, therefore we do not have buffer. And that came with the caveat that we, we shall not change uh, or increase our runoff from the site, uh, which we will not. And that will become part of the peer review with Horsley and Witt. Okay, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Anyone Thank else? Thank you. Roy, please. You're muted, Roy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the, the, the garage, the enclosed single car garage and the single car driveway is how you come up with your 64 parking spaces. Is that correct? That's correct. And then additionally, we have 20 spaces uh, in our island. Understood. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like it if the, if the board, the rest of the board would indulge me and I mean, and, and ask that you kind of explain your retaining wall because it's not that clear what you intend on doing here on the site, but let me finish and then there's not much more. Um, just a, just a clarification. You mentioned, uh, this was Chris, you just said something about you talked about water, you talked about sewer, you talked about fire, and you kept saying individual units. I suspect what you mean by that, calling a unit is a building. Um, right? You're not gonna bring you're not gonna bring water, separate water, sewer, and fire to every single unit of the 32 units, are you? We're gonna bring separate water and sewer to each unit. Yep. And then we'll bring a fire suppression line to each building. Great. Okay. But no, we're going to have individual sewer services. We're not going to try to run a uh, one line parallel for six or eight units and dump it into the manhole. Uh, it just becomes a, okay. a long term logistical nightmare. We'll have direct flushing. If somebody, oh, good. if the unit blows up in unit 32 and unit 28 and 9 are below it and we have to dig through their, their cellar, it does not work. Okay. Um, and the last thing is <clears throat> about all this infiltration that you're trying to do here. And I'm very familiar with Caltex, as you know, Chris. Mm. Um, so, Buy stock. What's that? Buy stock. stock. Yeah, exactly. Um, is, is, so I guess my, my question is, how deep is ledge here? Does that, that, have you found, do you know where ledge is and why I'm asking that? Is, is there a point with this big hill that you infiltrate so much water that it hits the ledge and runs down and blows out somebody's lawn on Emory? And I know that's happened when some blasting occurred up at uh, Oak Hill. We, we did uh, substantial soil testing. And uh, we had no refusal, no ledge, tremendous uh, permeable soil, uh, good gravel, which is why we're able to infiltrate this. And uh, I, I don't know, and I know it's, a, it's an unfair question and unfair answer, Roy, but I don't know any exposed ledge in the general area uh, that we've seen and we hit nothing. And uh, I know that if you just go past Emory Street down to 114, they excavated that site and built that wall for that plaza. And uh, we, we feel that we have the soil and the capacity to infiltrate that. It's a good site. Okay. So I guess the, just the last thing that I already talked about, if you right. just want to explain uh, your, your retaining wall concept and how that might affect the neighbors. Yeah, we don't have any. We receive that wall. I, I don't think we have a wall on the site. Oh, well, you have a detail on one of your shoes. Ah, yes. Going an eight that, foot. That's the, that's the extra $250 on the detail sheet. Uh, right. But we do not have one. And I know that detail is there. Okay. So you're not, there is no retaining wall. No, there aren't. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it, it, honestly, could we get a wing wall out of one of the buildings for grading? That's kind of why that's there. As you, as you get the return for the walkout sellers, 
at each end yeah. of the building, there could be a couple of feet that you want to hold back. But yeah, there's I nothing thought, to do. I thought you were going to try to uh, put in a retaining wall on that north line and try to recoup some more flat area. No, we're, we're, that's why we're, we've got the step system coming from uh, south to north, if you will, as Joe showed you in his sections, where we get the, uh, the second level walk out the garage, first floor, the flat paving garage, drop down eight feet to the walkout, and then we're at grade again. Okay. We're pretty good shape. And do you, do you know the, uh, the, 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 the cut and fill here? Is there material leaving the site, coming back, coming into the site? Is, do you know the percentages? Of, is it neutral? No, no, I don't, but I feel that it's, it's more of an equal fill borrow than other sites. And by the time we're done, we will have that answer because it's important to Mr. Hoyle to know whether he's uh, importing or exporting. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Uh, I have a couple questions. Is that okay? Go ahead. Uh, so this was mentioned to everyone uh, previous, but the reason that this uh, application is before you is due to the overlay district that was approved, uh, I believe, two years ago um, for the mall area. That being said, the applicants will have to go in front of the city council for a special permit. On top of that, Jack, will you, you need a variance because there's no retail component to this? No. No. You won't for the setback? We're fine on our setback. Oh, this is the triple. Yeah, it has to be 300%. Is this the zoning district that without uh, commercial, the same as on Route 1, where you triple the setback? Yeah, I believe it's 100 feet, and so you'd have to be 300 feet back. So I think you would have I mean, you would have to go get a variance for that. I'll include that with the decks. Uh, back into that, you are seem to be doing quite a bit of uh, document wrangling uh, between traffic and different items with Stormwater, uh, I one just want to make sure that you get all the new plans uh, to the right people, uh, mainly right. the engineering department. But I want to be privy to those plans as well. So please send me a copy of the new plans when you do that. <coughs> um, I want to make sure the plan where it has them. Uh, you mentioned in the application you're seeking a waiver for a lighting plan because you do not have. Uh, the technology photometric. Moment, a photometric plan. Uh, personally, from community development or from community development standpoint, I'd like to know what kind of light. I mean, you're gonna be above the people behind you uh, on Emory. There, I, I mean, I if you're not gonna show the photometric plan, then I mean, if you're gonna do any sort of lighting on that, I know it's people's personal decks, but I don't know. Are you gonna do any building lighting on the exterior? The current, the current plan uh, has a conceptual lighting plan and includes a, uh, a colonial porch light, if you will, on each deck. And it includes a recessed light on the portico over the front walk on all the units. And then we have a couple uh, of uh, parking lot lights, if you will, colonial lights in that island. And we certainly can look at the ramifications of the photometrics. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you're, if you're, the lighting on the back seems pretty uh, minimal, but I mean, this kind of goes to my second point where I think the back buffer uh, needs to be significant uh, of vegetation. I know you're putting the fence there, but again. So, so Drew, uh, if I could say, we uh, we share the same sentiment. We definitely want the lighting to be of high quality. We want it to be a little bit sort of, uh, I'll call it lower scale, uh, you know, washing the stone and, you know, kind of capturing some of the details and not being too bright. So um, I'm going to be doing some work uh, on the architectural side and I can, you know, sort of put together some views. 
um, and maybe some comps just so that we all have a sense of what we're trying to do. But we definitely share that sentiment that we don't want to you know, overlight this thing and uh, we want to you know, make it sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, just a final question here. And actually, Roy, you might know, but at the construction review meeting, you had talked with Will Cardello about the electric equipment that's going to have to be out there and that you need to figure out a place for that to go. Has that been decided yet? Not yet. We will work with the with the with the uh, the engineer and the electrical contractor and get it all nailed down to meet specifications. I don't see uh, any problem whatsoever with that. Does that, it's not a, it's not like a big, it's like four by four, correct? The equipment that's gonna go out there? Um, probably a little bigger. Yeah. Pa the pads, the, pra the pad would probably be six foot by seven feet. I'm, I'm assuming it would probably be one larger transformer as opposed to a bunch of smaller ones is my, is my initial suspicion. Yeah. Uh, do you know where, I, I guess the, the reason I'm asking is because for the site plan review of this project, I think it'd be helpful to know where it's going to be. So the planning board, you guys can all have an idea of what it's going to look like on site. And then getting to my second point is that if, it, if it's, if it's one, if it's one unit, it would more than likely have to reside somewhere near that uh, mailbox cluster. Okay. The, the, team, the team acquiesces that wherever PMLP wants it, we're going to find room for it, landscape around it, and make it look good. Yeah, and, and I don't doubt that. Um, and, and then there would probably be um, five, six, seven, or eight um, meter stack banks per building, all, all clustered in one on one side of each building. No problem. Yep. Yep. And then I just also wanted to point out, and I know that the applicants are aware of this, but uh, at the construction review meeting as well, Captain Dowling from the fire department had asked, uh, and I believe Captain Richards had as well, uh, that currently, or as the project was submitted, the traffic pattern was uh, cars would be able to go either way around the circle and for all intents and purposes inside there. Uh, and Captain Richards had asked that it be one-way traffic flow. So that you would- You'd ask that we certainly look at that. I don't think, and we, we uh, when we commissioned uh, Ken Cram, we had him uh, look at that issue too. I don't think that the captain was saying that he, he wanted us to look at it, as I recall, not necessarily uh, make it one way around. But that's just my notes and my recollection. That's what I recall. Um, and I believe you had sent over already the truck turning radiuses to Captain Dowling. We got those the, that very afternoon, and I sent them off to Mr. Mello, and he has already applied them to these. Uh, I reviewed those, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and our radiuses exceed. Uh, the standards that he provided us with, uh, we have a greater turning radius, so we have a little extra room for uh, his vehicles. We're in good shape. Perfect. Anyone else? Anything to offer? I I just want to say that it, from what I saw in the presentation, it looks like a uh, a a really aesthetically pleasing design. Thank you. Uh, that was for the architect, not for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I take it when I can get it. It's, uh, it's, you know, we have a great client that, that wants to push uh, the uh, design uh, a little bit higher. So credit to him. Yes. I, I take it you gentlemen will be back before us in the future? Yes. And if you have an updated plan uh, prior to that meeting? Would, yeah, uh, we've got to get them to uh, all the peer review will need right. to be that, uh, as well as uh, uh, Ken Cram needs to know the unit count change for his information too. Uh, Anything I, further? I have nothing to add. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you. I think that's a wrap on this portion. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jack, unless you want to 
speak Pardon? about Stonegate. Unless you want to speak about Stonegate, we have your letter, but. Hello. I'm good. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is appointments, and we have none. Item E is Stonegate Subdivision. I believe we had a, have a letter from Attorney Kelty. Yeah, there should be a letter, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chair, in your meeting packets. Uh, someone care to receive and address that? I'm sorry, I didn't see it in the packet along with the minutes of the other meeting. I've seen it. It's it's it was in mine anyway. It's uh, dated the 18th. The chair. Yes, Matt. Uh, can I make a motion to receive the uh, letter dated May 18th from Attorney Kelty's office to extend the sub subdivision application until June 24th, 2021? We have a second. Roy, Roy seconded. Now that was just to receive or grant the extension? Uh, grant the extension as well. Uh, motion to receive and grant the extension of time. All in favor? Aye. The motion unanimous. Everybody has raised their hand. Unanimous. Hmm. I, have, I keep asking the same question. Does, does anybody know what's taking so long and when are we going to see a set of plans? Uh, well, I was, I was hoping Jack would chat a little bit about that but i know that they are working on new plans uh i believe the idea is that they are and this is strictly what i think is happening is that they are working on these new plans making sure and working with the department of engineering closely to make sure that everybody is on the right page with these plans before making sure that they finalize and send in something new i believe the the idea is and i know jack had mentioned this in another meeting that the the plan has changed quite a bit up there that I think it's going to require, which I would almost 98% guarantee that it's going to require a new filing up there. Uh, and then Jack mentioned this at the other plan or at the other, another meeting, but from the plan that I saw, it is a significantly smaller uh, footprint than what was proposed uh, before. Thank you. But I think Roy what's happening right now is that they're one doing kind of there. I think they just want to make sure they have the right plan before they come through and you know what happened last time continuance 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 happens again okay okay stonegate anything on stonegate just did stonegate oh sorry uh boulderwood i'm still oh, leading yeah. department of engineering uh memo uh, uh city city council special permits any commentary on those Nothing. All right, I'll accept the uh, motion of the evening. Mr. Chairman, move to adjourn. Got a second. Mr. Gagnon, all in favor? Aye. Unanimous, Drew. All right, everyone, have a great evening and have a great weekend, and we will see you at the next meeting. Very good. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.